I, I laugh at people, they often ask me, uh, what one event led to the shift in your ministry? It's kind of hard to answer that, ma'am, because it's never any one event. It's a series of events that when you look back on it, if this hadn't happened, that wouldn't happen, if that wouldn't happen, this wouldn't happen, that wouldn't happen, this wouldn't happen. But in the middle of all of those series of events, there's always one primary thing that is a destiny point. And my destiny point ministerially was this. Sit down, sit down, sit down, relax. Y'all are so excited. I was preaching everywhere, preaching for everybody. The Lord was blessing. Full-time ministry, go, going forward. I had already done Woman Art Loose. Nobody knew it, nobody heard of it, nothing like that. Already writing, nobody knew it, nobody heard of it, nothing like that. Preaching in major facilities, but not on a major, major scale, major for me. I happened to get an invitation to go to speak for Higher Dimensions in Tulsa. There were three speakers to speak at a pastor's conference. It wasn't Azusa, it wasn't a big one. It was Azusa Pastors Conference held at Carlton Pearson's church. Three speakers were to speak. One Wednesday, one Thursday, one Friday. I was to speak Thursday. Brian Q. Williams spoke Wednesday and Dr. Hamby spoke Friday. We spoke, I spoke a message behind closed doors. Pastor Pearson was on television, I wasn't. He decided to play a clip of each one of the three speakers. He, it was a seven minute clip. Seven minutes, three times seven is 21. By the time he did his opening, his close, and his advertisement, they took up the 30 minute one. Seven minutes. He played seven minutes of my sermon. Whoever was in the editing booth had to choose which section of my sermon to play. He, in the editing booth, chose a particular section of the sermon where I was talking about Christ showing his wounds. So that was the clip he chose. He chose that clip, it was edited into the show. Carlton aired that show. He decided, Carlton decided when to air that show. Had he decided to air it at another time, even though he used that particular clip, it wouldn't have made any difference. Paul Crouch happened to come home at the time that Carlton Pearson's show was on. He happened to reach for the remote control at the particular seven minute window that my particular clip of the sermon happened to be on. If he would have went in the kitchen to eat a ham sandwich, it just so happened that, that Paul Crouch was writing a book called I Had No Father But God and he was struggling with whether he should tell the details of the story of his life. And so when I start talking about showing people your wounds, it just so happened that that was what he needed to hear at that particular moment in his life. If the person in the editing booth had chose another section of my message, even though it was me preaching, it wouldn't have gotten done what it needed to get done. But because I happened to say yes to a conference that Carlton happened to have, and Carlton happened to put it on television, and it happened to be the right seven minutes that the right person heard it at the right time, when Paul heard it, he started crying, called Carlton on the phone, said, find who this big joker is from West Virginia and bring him to California. Is there anybody in here who can understand what I'm talking about? All of a sudden, I ended up in a situation that nobody understood. I was on the phone talking to one of my friends said, you'll never be on television. You don't have no way to be on television. You don't know anything about television. You don't own no cameras. You don't have no staff. You don't have no crew. You don't have no people. You don't have no backup. You didn't come from a major church. You don't preach the right style. You holler too much. You sweat too much. You make too much noise. You're going to have to change everything before you can get in. But don't let nobody mess you up when you're getting close to your spot. If you know that you got something down inside of you, don't let no devil in 
hell. Todd, you are right. God! Slap somebody and say something is about to happen. After all the hell I've been through and after all the pain I've borne and all the suffering I've been through, I can feel my foot about to hit the place where something is about to happen. to but I feel like I'm talking to somebody and whoever you are you might think that you just happened to come to the potter's house today but no this was a setup you're in the right place at the right time hearing the right message for what you're going through at this moment God wants you to know your foot is almost in the spot and you're gonna stumble up into something that I haven't seen yes. And so, 